Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today I'm going to do a vlog. Today is just a busy around the house day and my favorite vlogs to even watch are people just doing things around their house. I know people can relate. It's weird to some, but others will understand. I'm just finishing stuff, some stuff up in the kitchen, so I just want to show you what I'm doing. I'm also going to show you the fall decor that I have been putting around my house. Honestly, it's just pumpkins everywhere. I didn't do too much this year. And I'm really focusing on budgeting right now. So very simple fall decor, very cheap, affordable. So you know what, that might be your thing. Maybe it'll be a good thing. All right, let's head to the kitchen. I just took the compost out. We don't have a compost bin. We just keep everything here and just make sure to take it out once a day, once every other day if we're not really using stuff. I just love seeing how colorful everything is and it just reminds me to eat clean, which is great. Dishes are done. I do have some new stuff, so I would like to show you. I got some bowls and I think they are beautiful. These are ceramic made in Portugal. I just wanted something that's gonna be good, something that can, you know, heat up and not have plastic in it and not transfer any kind of chemicals and things like that. And I just think they're beautiful and timeless. And I'm just trying to be a lot more intentional with the things that I buy for my home and try to see if I can visualize having this <laughs> in 10 years, you know? Will they last 10 years? Who knows? But I just don't want to buy things that are on trend as much anymore. I used to do that for my bedroom all the time and I would buy new things for my bedroom every couple years. And not only do I not think that's good for my bank account, but it's also not good for, you know, the environment and sustainability. So I'm trying to be more intentional. I think those bowls will last me years and I really like them. Instacart was pretty good. It's been coming through. I needed more coffee creamer and because I work from home and couldn't get any, I figured I would try doing Instacart for the second time. So I got some creamer. I always have this creamer. I've been making my own coffee, my own cold brew right here. I've cut down on coffee as an expense quite a bit. I got some grapes. I got some blackberries, some mushrooms, some spinach, onion, zucchini. I did get some sparkling water, but these don't have any like added sugar or anything like that. It's just water and flavors. Tofu is really cheap. This was $1.69. I got some bananas and avocado. I already had a piece of my banana. What I'm gonna do now is show you how I wash my berries because I have a tendency to let my produce go bad. And like, honestly, I'm trying to eat so much cleaner because I've been feeling a lot better when I do. I just feel so good cooking at home and being intentional about what I buy, not going out to eat and getting a bunch of drinks and like all this stuff. So my body's thanking me for it. I've been trying to drink more water. I have a lot of updates, a lot of things I've been doing that makes me, you know, want to share some things with you guys naturally. So what I do to not waste produce is wash it right away. And I have these, again, sustainable, that I put my berries in and put them in the fridge. I'm going to use a salad spinner and some, some white vinegar and some water. I got to do this pretty quickly because I do have a client call in 30 minutes, so... I'm trying to at least get through all the kitchen stuff now, jump on my call, and then I'll move on to laundry. So I'm just gonna do my fruit. With veggies, usually I wait till I'm cooking them, and let's say I'm gonna use half a bag of broccoli. I'll just cook the whole thing, and then chop them up and put them in one of these. But for fruit, I like to do it as soon as I get it. That way, when I'm ready to snack on fruit, they're good, they're clean. So I'm gonna pop these blackberries in here. No, I didn't even do this right. What am I doing? What am I doing? I lied, we're putting the blackberries in a bowl. I just give them a little toss. And I'm gonna let this sit for like five minutes, five to 10 minutes. And I'm gonna use a big bowl for the grapes because I've got a ton. On Instacart, it said red grapes would be approximately $6.59. Um, and you know, I, I totally understand adjusting for weight and I totally understand if these came out to like $8, $9, totally fine. I get my receipt and they're $19.53 for grapes. $20 for a bag of grapes. And I'm like, absolutely not because my total just jumped $20 for a bag of grapes. So I called and I got a refund, so that was great. So I'm just picking out these nasty ones. First example right there, any produce that's bad, right into our little compost pile until it gets taken outside later. And now we're gonna fill these grapes with some water. Cool. 
I love red grapes. Right, while I wait for these berries to get cleaned up, I'm gonna show you my little pumpkins around the house. So we're gonna start with the dining room. So on the dining table, I have this little tray of things. So I have this little tree that started off as kind of a joke to put here because I've needed something for my vase and it looks kind of funny, but you know what? It's gonna stay there and it works. This is a plant my grandmother gave me. And then two little pumpkins my friend gave me last year when she moved and they're from Target. They're like little ceramic ones. So they're better than the cheap little Target ones that I always end up getting. My boyfriend made this candle and I made this vase. So very cool. The little tree is from Michael's. Then in the living room, I have this little pumpkin next to this cute little dog treat thing that I got. So this little guy was like a dollar from Target. On the coffee table, I have this guy, this little candle, vintage bourbon and apple. Also $3 from Target. And the rest of them are in my room. This is where we'll find the most. Sorry, I have a lot of laundry to do. I've got this guy. On my dresser, I have this one that kind of goes with that dark blue one in the living room, a dollar from Target. This one is new, I got this year. I love this one for some reason. There's just something about it. It's very cute. And this one I think is from Michael's. And then on my nightstand, I have two more. And I have my Kindle in here as well. I've been reading the Bible on my Kindle. I don't know if it feels the same as like opening up my actual Bible, but that's why that's there. I also got this shirt from my church that is so cute. They're hosting an event this week and I actually went yesterday, which was Thursday. So today will be the last day. I'll watch it online today because of work, but I love it. It's so cute. I got two. I got this one and then I got like an oversized gym, like graphic tee of theirs. And yeah, so, so look today. All right, we're back in the kitchen. I'm going to start with the grapes because this is actually the salad spinner bowl. So I'm going to drain this then we just give it a spin. Alright, it should be good. Cool. So we collected some water. Not as much as I thought, but it's not bad. Now, I don't like using Ziploc bags because, you know, I'm just talking about being more sustainable. But I don't have one of these that are big enough for all these grapes. And we do still have a lot of Ziplocs to get through. So I feel like I never use them and I will use some for these grapes today. All right, here's our water. And these I can easily put in here. My fruit is prepped. I am going to press my tofu as well, and I'll show you how easy that is. So I have this little tofu bud right here. Typically, I was buying my tofu already pressed, but I was paying like 350 rather than 160 so i'm just gonna start pressing my own tofu you know you buy this once and then save money every time so and i'll have them both linked the salad spinner and the tofu press if you're interested you get two of these little guys so you're gonna put one into the bottom of here one in tofu in second one on and then you have this little spring that you have to line up with these two lines right here and press down as hard as you can and then turn. It's hard to do this not on a table, but there you go. So now the tofu is being pressed. All the water will end up down here and then it'll be good to cook. I had um, approved. It would still be in there for her. Now, could we think to, to, I think, kind of probably make that a bit better? Yeah. So once it's been approved by the first approver, what's the status then? Default first level and default second level. Is that a required field? You need to override the cost center at the account level. Okay. Okay. My pastor wrote a book, which I think is super cool. There's a little bit about him back here, and he talks about his life. And basically, it's seven key things that are inspired by the life of Joseph in Genesis in the Bible, um, and how to transform any obstacle in your life into an opportunity. It honestly makes you think about your life in two different ways, right? Like, we can look at all of our obstacles in life and kind of be in this victim mindset, 
on reasons why we're not doing more and reasons why we can't reach this potential and things like that or we can look at the positive side of things and say yes i was given these obstacles and life is not fair but this is what i'm going to do with that and i'm going to turn it around for something good with the help of god god's either going to spin it or use it and it's been a really really good book so definitely recommend get it on amazon barnes and noble anywhere i really enjoyed reading on my breaks just get away from the screen because i've been staring at a screen all day so like scrolling on my phone watching youtube it's not as enjoyable i only have like 10 minutes left so hopefully i can get through a couple pages and then i'll get back to work Dinner has been made, so I do have some stuff to take out to the compost. I'm gonna show you what the compost looks like. It is not the prettiest sight to see, but this is what it looks like after a couple of hours and just cooking one meal um, and finally de-seeding these black eyed peas. So the bucket gets full pretty frequently, which is why you know I never really have an issue with smell or anything. So let's go take this guy outside. Here's the compost. It's a little scary in there. Let's see what we got. So I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. In they are. Goodbye. So apparently this is what end of season looks like. Not really a gardener, so this is all new to me, but I'm gonna pick some more black eyed peas and we'll just hope that I don't run into any grasshoppers this time. If you saw my last video, you'll know what I'm talking about. So no grasshopper, but I did see the tiniest lizard. I don't even know how I spotted him. He's so little. All right, so here's what I got. I'm gonna change the battery because it's flashing and we'll start de-seeding these. I think I'm gonna do it right out here because it it is finally cooling down. So, not so much during the day, but in the afternoon. So it's actually really nice to sit out here. And I actually filmed a couple days ago and I had to go inside within like five minutes of filming because it started raining. So it doesn't look like it's gonna rain today. So hopefully I can spend a little bit of time outside because it's something that I do want to make time for every day. It's good for the soul, it's good for the body, and it's good for the mind. So as I've gotten older, I just turned 27 last month. I have realized that a quiet lifestyle is kind of important to me, right, for my mental health. I, growing up, was that kid that, because I was raised in the city, a lot of city kids, if we're raised in the city, we want to stay in the city, you know? We feel like anything that is smaller than where we grew up is boring, off the grid, like what's the point of living there, there's nothing to do. So coming from a place like Miami, I mean if you're not moving to New York or California, it's like why are you going to any other state kind of thing? And yeah, I always thought I wanted to be where all the movement was, where all the noise was, where all the places to go were, where, you know, the trendy spots and things like that. And I think it is hard to go from like a total city girl to kind of slowing things down but I just want to say it feels really good I still live in a huge city but it's so quiet here it's so quiet where I am it's for the first time I'm living in a house with a yard where I can just get some peace and some quiet and just do like simple mundane things and not feel like I'm missing out that I should be doing more I should be going more places I'm just kind of content with the little day-to-day -day things and that is boring to a lot of city people and like a lot of people I grew up with but um I really see a beauty in it you know the other thing is I've just started to look at life in a more positive light you know we all have we all have our issues we all have our struggles we all have things that we've gone through that were not so pleasant but I have been radically transformed I want to just let people know like whether your family upbringing isn't great or your dating life has been extremely toxic, appreciating, and it's hard to, to look at the good because I can, I wanna make another video on this where this is the full topic, but 
I can look at my life in two different ways. And I've already in my head kind of listed all these things. I could tell you all these facts about one girl and all these facts about another girl. And then in the end tell you both of those were my life. Both of those lives were mine. They're just completely different. You know, I could look at all the stuff I've went through as and all these obstacles as something terrible and a reason for people to pity me or for me to be a victim or just give give myself an excuse to not do more in life. But I'm at a point now where I'm done doing that and it's time to think about all the blessings that we have. Not to weigh each other's struggles or compare them, but we really are, you know, more blessed than we realized. The only thing I've done different is pray different. Pray for wisdom and ask for guidance. Yesterday um, at my church's event, we had another pastor come in from Oklahoma. He was really good. He said, God won't give you all the details of what his plan is for you, but he'll always give you the next step. If you don't know what to do, where to go, he's not going to tell you that you're going to go through this struggle and that struggle and this struggle and you're going to be here and you're going to be there because then you'll never do it, you know? But he'll always guide you to the right place to take that next step. Alrighty, I think I'm done with chores for the day, so I'm finally gonna wind down, watch a little bit of YouTube, edit the video you're watching, and pop open my blackberry lemonade. My church's event is starting in 15 minutes. It's their 10 year anniversary, so I'll show you guys. I'll be watching that right over here on my TV, if it works. We've had some internet issues, so I might have to watch it on my phone, but hopefully I can see it on the TV so I can put the volume up and feel the music and feel the message. Going in person yesterday was so great. It just felt so powerful. It's been wonderful. I've watched all four days, um, and today's the last day. Don't thank your coffee. Come on, somebody. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Give the Holy Spirit the credit he's due. Next time you get some inspiration, don't thank the Pinterest quote. Thank the power of the Holy Spirit that he's still motivating you, he's still speaking to you, he's still moving in your life. Next time you walk into church and you're afraid, and all of a sudden you walk out of these doors and you have a gust of courage, you have some new gumption, some new conviction, do not just simply thank the preacher, don't just simply thank the music, you understand in that moment, I got this courage and I got this power through the person of the Holy Spirit, I know where to give my credit to. If you live for the praise of people, you will die by the rejection of people. That's what happened to Saul. Saul, he feared man more than he feared God, and with it, God rejects Saul. Some of y'all thought that job rejected you. Nope, God rejected it. Some of y'all thought that person rejected you. Oh, no, no, my friend. God rejected that person in your life. Why? Because he said, I got something better for you. Get your eyes on where I'm taking you. He wants to use us. But if we are unwilling to be used, he will find another. I don't know about you tonight, but I am humbled to be in this room. What an honor it is to open up this book. What an honor it is to hold this microphone and try my best to give you the words of God. God doesn't need me. If I would make myself willing, he would say, Rich Wilkerson Jr., I could use you too. Is there anybody in the house tonight who would say, God? 